Hey guys, Neil here. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering what to look for in your uh, lighting fixtures. I'm going to start with a non-DMX light here. It's uh, the Goboscope 250 by American DJ. Now, if I zoom in here, you'll notice some of the things that are, are on the back of it. Uh, you've got certain things to look for, of course, is the selecting of the power level. Uh, that can be very useful if you ever plan to travel to other countries. Uh, in this particular case, you have a speed dial, but usually more commonly is the sensitivity dial uh, with the microphone there. Uh, that allows you to adjust the sensitivity of the light to music. Um, over here, of course, you have the fuse, also important to check. Another common thing to, to verify is that whether or not the fixture has a IE, IEC plug or if it's actually connected built in. Uh, sometimes people prefer having plugs that connect to it and others prefer it having a solid connection that just won't come apart. On contrast, this is the Kinta, the Chauvet Kinta. On it, it is a DMX controllable light as well as Master Slave. Uh, you'll see right here, these are the connections for the DMX and Master Slave configuration. Uh, next to it, you have the remote control uh, option. Now this is useful if you're using Master Slave or using it the, the unit as standalone. Uh, however, when you move to DMX, those remote control connectors become uh, less convenient. Uh, of course, there's the sound uh, microphone and of course the IEC connector along with the fuse underneath. When you're interested in DMX control, another important question to ask is what kind of control do you have with the DMX uh, programmability? Uh, you'll want to check how many channels it has, but also remember that the increased number of channels doesn't necessarily mean that it has more control over the light. Sometimes it can actually be more frustrating having more channels. But you want to check, for instance, things like does it dim or does it not have a dimmer? Uh, does it strobe? Is the strobe unique from the dimmer or is the dimmer and strobe on the same channel? Uh, those kinds of things indicate whether or not you have a lot or a little control over the DMX. Uh, what kinds of patterns do you, do you have over it? All those kinds of uh, questions are important when you're looking for a light with lots of control. Over here, we've got a dimmer pack just to show another uh, fixture and, and what can be on the back. Uh, on this one, you actually have an on-off switch right on the unit along with the IEC power and of course the various fuses for the dimmer packs and the power setting there. Uh, next to it of course you have what's familiar, the DMX in and out, which automatically tells you that it's DMX controllable when you see that. Uh, on the top here you'll also see the, con the uh, LED uh, options. Now that is useful uh, to actually see visually what's going on. Um, sometimes they offer only dip switches to set the various settings, which can be quite frustrating because you never actually see what's going on. I'll uh, contrast that. The example of that would be on the Kinta over here. You'll see underneath, you'll see the dip switches here. Uh, right there. You see how uh, there's not much information and you kind of have to know exactly what's going on which can be a pain in the butt when you're at a gig and something's not going pr working properly because you may not have the manual and uh, good luck trying to remember all of your fixtures and the settings that they require. So uh, always look for the LED or uh, LCD screen on the uh, fixtures. Over here we have the Chauvet color strip. It's one of the newer fi fixtures that have, uh, that have a new uh, style to them. Uh, I'll go over, go over that. Uh, now you're starting to see daisy chain power supplies. That can be useful because you no longer have to have all the splitters and uh, wires that are all running 
together and all over the truss anymore. Um, this will allow you to use fewer uh, extension cords. Over here, of course, you have the DMX in and out, but more uniquely, you've got over here, I'll just pass over here, is the Master Slave Link output. Now, it's separate from the DMX output. What this allows you to do is actually connect DMX in and out through this fixture, as well as have this master slaved to other units. And the unique part of that is that now the programs are actually able to not only mimic one another, these fixtures don't only mimic, but they also uh, create a, a chase effect where it starts on one fixture and moves on to the next. So uh, that can be a very useful thing that will probably become more common in uh, fixtures to come. So uh, definitely think about that when you're looking for lights. Uh, I've just focused here on its LCD screen. Um, it, of course, as you can see, is very simple to uh, work. And again, uh, I just stress that the LCD is a very uh, cool feature to have. Of course, this also has an external controller there and the mic sensitivity knob. The external controller is less important when you're intending to use it with DMX, but it can be very useful and very simple when, uh, when you're uh, just using it standalone or in master slave. So what I've done now is I've connected the power to the two Chevet color strips However, they're not master slaves synced together. This would be what you would get if you uh, did not buy a master slave capable unit. You can see they're impressive, but they're just not in sync. And uh, it creates a completely different effect from one to the other. In contrast to the units being unlinked together from Master Slave. This is now a Master Slave linked Chevet color strip. So as you can see, both fixtures are matched perfectly with one another. It creates an entirely different effect. The way I do it is simply by connecting a DMX or a mic cable to uh, each, each one from uh, daisy chaining them together. Uh, and they should they automatically recognize that they're in the the master slave orientation with one being the master and the other being the slave so in this case this one over here is the master and it will be listening to the music while this one over here does just reacts to the what this one tells it to do so this one is just simply acting as a slave now, uh, repeating everything that this one does. Uh, in more advanced fixtures, such as these, I can actually set them to uh, start on this one and move over to this one. So when I, I'll pause it now and set them to that mode so you can see what effect that does. So I've now set these to know that there are two fixtures uh, and they are now working together, which is unique, unlike most other uh, DMX capable uh, or master slave capable units. You can see it's starting over on this on this side and responding over Here there. Here we see the color strips responding to music in the master slave orientation. While you're watching, I'll also take a moment to talk about the brightness versus power consumption. Uh, different bulb types, halogen, discharge, LED, use different amounts of power to create different amounts of brightness. Halogen is the cheapest, but it's one of the most inefficient uses of power. Whereas you get discharge, which are used in the more high-end scanners and moving heads. They're very efficient, but they also take a lot of power as well. They're designed for, for much brighter use of, uh, of lighting. When you get into LEDs, they're probably the most efficient use per, per lux or per measure of brightness. Uh, these, of course, are LED and they'll create roughly about 300 watts of, of light in terms of halogen. So uh, those are kinds of considerations that you need to make as well when you're looking at lights. Never forget to check the brightness and power consumption to see if it's uh, something that you'd want 
or if you'd want something brighter or more power, power efficient.